friends, and welcome to another French Fried Trains Minecraft Train Tutorial. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to build the SEPTA Silverliner Force, and we're going to be building two of them in a married pair. So let's get right into the build here. So for our first step, we're going to make a column of temporary blocks on the outside edge of the tracks on each side, three blocks tall. Then right here, we're gonna put an inward facing, upside down, polish andesite stair on each side. Then take out all these temporary blocks. Then we'll extend the stairs back another two on each side, and then knock out the middle ones. Then in the front center, we'll put a polished blackstone slab and a polished blackstone stair here and facing the other way here. Then we'll put a polished andesite block on the top of each of the four stairs here. Then here an upside down polished blackstone stair on each side and a polished blackstone block in the middle. Right here we'll stack up a dark oak stair for a coupler, erase the ones we use for placement, put a dark oak fence gate under it, and also open a dark oak fence gate on either side of the coupler. Above this we put a polished andesite block on each of the back corners here. A temporary block on front and we need a row of five upside down forward facing polish andesite stairs across the front. Then we're going to put three smooth stone slabs coming up this gap on the upper hip box of each block on both sides for stairs. Then on the second layer we'll put two rows of three polished black stone blocks. Then on the next block down behind this we're going to do our wheels. So we're going to get a netherite on each rail here with an end rod in between them for the axle. Then in front of that, we're gonna make a three x four of polished black stone blocks. Then another set of netherite wheels and an end rod axle. Then we're gonna put a wither skeleton skull on the side of each wheel and same thing over here. Then next to the front wheel on the side of this, we're gonna put back to back upside down deep slate polished stairs and same thing over here. Then we'll skip one to the back of this and put a forward facing upside down polished deep slate stair on each side. In between them we put a horizontal lightning rod on both sides. Then we'll fill this top middle three down to the end of the truck with polished black stone block. On the outside edge of the second layer we're going to put a row of outward facing upside down polished andesite stairs. Same thing on this side here. Next we're going to put a column of two polished andesite blocks on each of the front corners. Skip a block back and put a single stone block. Behind this two layers of stone blocks going down to the end. And same thing on this side two layers of stone blocks. And actually, we're going to come down here and knock out this andesite block and change it to stone. And do the same thing on the other side. Change this one to stone. Then up here, we're going to put two blue concrete on each side like this. And we're going to use our windows to measure the car. We're going to use black stained glass panes, two long for each window with a single blue concrete in between them we need to extend it out until we have five windows. Once you have five windows on the end, we're going to do two blue concrete, another two block long window, and two blue concrete. Then in front of this, we're going to do five windows again with just a single blue concrete in between each one. all two blocks long with black stained glass panes. And on the end, we put two blue concrete. So it should look like this. On this end, we're gonna come directly underneath the last glass block of the second window and we're gonna put our next set of netherite wheels with an end rod in between them to be an axle. So they should be directly aligned with the end of that window. 
Then coming this way, we'll do a 3x4 of polished black stone block and another set of netherite wheels with an end rod axle. Then a wither skeleton skull on the side of each wheel and same thing over here. Then at this outside edge, back to back, upside down, polished deep slate stairs, skip a block and one facing this way and a sideways lightning rod between them. Repeat the pattern over here. So back to back stairs, skip a block, another stair and a sideways lightning rod. Now we can come back down to this end on this second layer and fill the middle three with polished blackstone blocks down to the end of the other trunk. Then on the outside edge of this layer, a full row of outward facing, polish, and a sight stairs upside down until it meets up over here. And we'll do the same thing at this side, a full row of upside down, outward facing, polish, and a sight stairs down to the end of it. Then above the stairs, on both sides, we'll do two full layers of stone blocks. When we get to this end down here, we need to add another upside down stair down here, and then two more stone blocks. Then we'll come across here with three polished black stone blocks. The same thing on this side, another upside down polished andesite stair. And then we'll do two full layers of stone down to the other end on this side. On top of that on this side, we'll come back through and copy our blue concrete pattern directly across exactly how the same it is on the other side. Then we'll come back through with black stained glass panes and fill in all of the windows on this side. Just like that. Now we need to come underneath this back end and we're actually going to take out the last stair on each side and put in polish and site block. Then we're going to make a column of temporary blocks right here and an upside down inward facing polished andesite stair right there. Then delete the temporary blocks and extend the stairs out by two. Same thing here. So we'll make a column of temporary blocks, an upside down stair right here, extend it out by two and delete the temporary blocks. Then we can take out the middle stair on each side here. Then above this, a polished andesite in each corner. Then at this back end, we're going to come stand on the rail and crouch and put an inward facing polished black stone stair here, then a slab of polished black stone, then a stair facing the opposite way right side up over here. Above it, upside down inward facing polished black stone stair on each side and a polished black stone block in the middle, then three polished black stone across here. Then a row of five backward facing upside down polished andesite stairs above it. Then we're going to put three smooth stone slabs coming up on the upper hip boxes up here for stairs and three on this side on the upper hip boxes for the stairs over here. Then we'll take a dark oak stair for our coupler, turn around and get it stacked up to that second block. Delete the one we used for placement, put a dark oak fence gate under it and also open dark oak fence gates on either side of the coupler here. Then on each of the top corners on back here, a column of two polished andesite blocks. Now because we're building these as a married pair, this back end here just has a door. It doesn't have a cab. So we're going to put a door in the center here. And then a column of two polished andesite on either side. And then under the middle of the door, an iron trap door and then 
on each side of the iron trap door a column of three polished black stone brick walls and three coming across the top of the door there. Then we're going to do the other end and this end has the cap. So we're going to put a polished andesite block down in each corner here and then we're going to come and grab a black stained glass block for the cap windows. And we're going to put a column of two black stained glass on top on either side like this. Then a door in the middle and a polished andesite above it. And actually we're going to take out that door and swing around and put it on this side so there's a little indentation before the door there. Then an iron trap door in front of the door. In this gap it's supposed to be a door that opens in real life but we're going to put a polished andesite block on bottom and two black stained glass blocks above it so they're side windows for the engineer. Back here in these gaps we'll put an opening door on each side for the passengers. Across the top of the back here we'll put five polished andesite blocks. Then we'll come up front and put a polished andesite block on the top of each front corner here. Then starting behind where this window is we're going to put a full row of stone blocks in a single layer above the windows all the way down to the other end of the car. And we'll do the same thing over here. A full line of stone blocks above these windows. All the way down to here. And we'll put these above the doors temporarily here. But we're going to take out a trap door here to make it look like the door extends up above the windows like it really does. So we'll close the trap door here and take out this block. And we'll do the same thing over here. Close the trap door up here so it looks like the door is taller. Take out that block. Because the doors extend up above the windows on the side of the car here. Now we're going to come inside here starting at one end and on this layer that the door is on we're going to put a full row of dark gray wool all the way down each side and just keep bringing it down here and then all the way to the end Then, right up the middle, we're going to put a full layer of light gray wool all the way down to the other end. And that'll make the floor of our car here for us. At this back end, one block in from this door, we'll put a column of three quartz blocks on either side, a door in the center, and a quartz block above it. Then at this cab end, we skip two blocks back from the end and do our column on each side with one on top and a door in the middle. Then we'll come in here and we're going to put a spruce stair on each side for the seats for the conductor and engineer. On this right hand bottom a lever for the engineer. Up here two glow item frames with compasses. Now the cab's done and we'll put in all of our seats for the rest of the car here. I'm using spruce stairs. You can use whatever color seats you want here. Just put a stair on either side with a gap between them coming all the way up until the whole car is filled with seats. I'm just winging it on this interior because I couldn't find really good reference for the inside of these. When we get up here and there's this two block gap, we'll just turn around and we'll put two seats facing the other way here. Then on the top inside here, on the bottom of the block above the windows, we're going to put a full row of iron trap doors on each side to be the overhead storage cells and go end to end on both sides. Now we're going to light the car. So up here in this cab, we're going to put three end rods across here and then in here. We're going to go end to end across the top middle with sideways end rods.
Then in this porch area, one on each side of the top here. And now the whole interior is done and lit up here. Now we're going to come underneath the car and we're going to fill this whole bottom middle three with polished blackstone slabs all the way down to the wheels at the other end. Then we're going to work on all the equipment that's down here. So come back to this end. We're going to skip a block and we're going to put a row of black shulker boxes. That's four long. Then three sideways grindstones. Then a brewing stand, a polished blackstone wall, and a brewing stand. So it looks like that. Then we'll continue on here. We're going to skip two blocks over and we're going to put four chiseled polished blackstone blocks, then three sideways grindstones, and then four black shulker boxes. So it looks like that. Then we'll head over and do the bottom of the other side here, and this side is slightly different. On this side, we'll skip two blocks over from the wheel, and then we're going to put three light gray shulker boxes, skip a block, and we're going to put a row of nine black shulker boxes. Then we're going to do two sideways grindstones and a brewing stand, and then five black shulker boxes. Now we're going to come on top here, and on the outside of each end, we're going to put four right side up, inward facing stone brick stairs. So four there, turn around, and four facing inward here. Then we'll put three polished andesite blocks across the top middle here, and we'll bring those three polished andesite all the way down to the other end. Then the same as the other end, we're going to put four inward facing stone brick stairs on either side on this end. Then we're going to switch to polish andesite stairs and on this top outside edge in between them, we'll do a full row of outward facing polish andesite stairs until it meets up down here. Then we'll do the same thing here, a full row of outward facing polish andesite stairs on this top outside edge until it meets up down on this side here. Now we'll detail the outside of this cab. So on the top middle three, put three stone brick walls, a glow item frame in the middle with glowstone for a headlight. Then a dark oak sign on the side of the headlight with our number, which for this one is gonna be 289. And same thing on the other side of the headlight. Then we'll hit the signs with white dye and then a glowing sack each. Then we're gonna put glow item frames here on each side with a redstone block for marker lights. So it looks like that. Then we'll come down here, put a glow item frame down on each of these stairs with glowstone for ditch lights. And I'm actually not liking how these marker lights look, so I'm going to take them off here. And I'm going to grab a redstone sto torch instead. We're also going to grab a regular item frame. Under these windows, we're going to put two regular item frames on each side, and we'll put a redstone torch up here on each side of the window for the marker lights. Come down to the other end that doesn't have the cab, and we'll put a red tone torch up here on each side for the marker lights down here. Now we'll do the pantograph here. So on the third block back on top from the front, we're going to put a sideways grindstone on each side, skip three, and another sideways grindstone on each side. Put a temporary block in between here. Then we need to crouch and put three crimson trapdoors at the same level as that block. Then we'll crouch and put one on each of these grindstones. Then we can go ahead and take out our temporary block there. So it should look like this for the base of the pantograph. 
Then we're going to have to come on here and crouch again and put a crimson fence in the middle. So it looks like this right now. Then we'll continue and extend our pantograph up here. So still using crimson fence, we're going to come over one, up one, over one, then up one in the middle and over back one. So it looks like that. Then we'll extend this top back one out by one fence on each side. Three crimson trap doors above here and then close a crimson trap door on each side of it. Then we can come in here and take out these outer fences leaving only the middle one. So that's our pantograph here. Now we'll do the big dynamic break box on top. So we're going to come aligned with the blue concrete after the second window in and we're going to put three forward facing polish andesite stairs. Then we'll come to this end, same thing, aligned with the second column between the second windows here and three stairs facing that way. Then we'll fill in all in between here, three wide, with deep slate tile blocks to be all the vents for the dynamic break box up here. Bring it all the way down to the stairs at this end. Then once we have that, we're gonna to switch to polish andesite slab and we're gonna cover the top of all the deep slate tile blocks with polish andesite slabs. That way it's silver on top and you only see the vents from the side. And bring it right down to this end. So it should be looking like this. Now we need to make some banners for all of our striping here. So come into a loom with a blue banner and we're gonna be using white dye here. Then we're gonna to switch to light gray dye, make the bottom half light gray. Then switch to red dye and put a red stripe across the middle. Then switch to a new blue banner, switch to light gray dye, put it across the bottom and a red stripe across the middle. New banner. And on this one, we just make the bottom half red. Up here on these item frames, we put the red and blue ones for the striping on the front. Then back here, this one with the white on it is the logo. So it goes next to the window and then the normal stripe one next to it. Then we put these stripe ones all the way down everywhere there's blue concrete between the windows. Because this is supposed to be an even red and blue stripe between the windows, but it's very hard to do at a one block scale in Minecraft. Then we put our logo one here. Then we'll do the same thing on this side. So a normal stripe one. Then the one with the white for the logo. And then we put a normal stripe one on all the blue concrete between the windows coming down this side. And then here we put the one with the logo. So it looks like that. Now this completes the build for the single car here. But like I said, this is gonna be a merry pair because we only have a cab at one end. So feel free to use the structure command to copy in or just build a second car except this time we're building it the opposite direction or copying it the opposite direction. So the hallways connect at the back and the cab is facing the other way now. So it looks like this. Now the only other difference is on the Mary pair, the second car does not have a pantograph. So we're gonna come through and take this pantograph right off here. If you want to do just a single car, then just build the single normal car and change the back end to have a cab as well. But I did the married pair here just for fun. And of course you can copy in as many pairs if you want to make longer trains. So then we take the pantograph off here and we're completed. So there we have it folks. We've completed our married pair of SEPTA Silverliner 4s. I hope you enjoyed the build here. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And everyone, have a great week. Stay safe out there, Rail fans.